Now, I want to, first of all, clarify something. I'm sorry if people misunderstood me where I'm a pro-war mindset. I am not a pro-war mindset. As a matter of fact, the Iraq war, I totally disagreed with that. Dr. Ruckman even taught against that. And uh, not a lot of military soldiers were happy. <laughs> they would argue with Dr. Ruckman or Pastor Donovan in the office. Uh, for people who have studied about the globalist mentality, war has been their key ingredient to build their dark antichrist kingdom. Okay? Now, I am not uh, pushing for war, but what I was disgusted with is the weakness of our country. Okay? Because with the kind of president that you have who's nothing but a child and then women behind him and fulfilling scripture, women and children shall rule, you know? So you get a, two women and a child, Pelosi, Kamala Harris, you just watch it every time they're in the, the house and then two women and a child and then just quote scurvy in the background, you know? Women and child shall be their leader, okay? While they all clap, okay? But anyways, so just seeing, you know, the, the impotence, so to speak, and the weakness of, you know, we're going to sanction them. And then these news reported, will that be enough? Will that be sufficient? And it's just so pathetic and weak, the state of our country. They're just so weak. And then that's why I was like poking fun that, you know, if there was a war and a battle that the, you know, the fairies over here in Silicon Valley and the Bay Area, they wouldn't survive, you know. It's just a weakling generation. Yeah. So what I'm disgusted at is the weakness of the country, all right? So don't be nitpicky and critical and misunderstand me. I'm disgusted with the weakness of our country, all right? But I am not a pro-war mindset, okay? But I am not anti-war either. And the Christian mentality behind this is that the governments belong to the devil system, right? Christians are not part of the order, the world order system and the governments. We're focusing on getting souls saved, getting people into Bible-believing yeah. churches. That's our focus and our priority. Because whoever we vote for, uh, sure, I understand you want to vote for something that betters your country, and I'm not against that, but I'm not really for it either, you have to understand. Because when you get the president that you want, Sometimes then you realize they don't really keep their promises or you find out that they have a personal sin or a moral background or scandal that they have, okay? So that's the, my Christian mentality behind it. Now, clarifying that, what do the scriptures say yeah. about Russia and Ukraine? That's what we want to look at. And then I'm also going to cover all the complicated issues of what you're hearing in the news and what's right and what's wrong and what's going on because everybody's confused. Once I research this, it's so confusing, guys. Uh, even the most famous conspiracy theorist, Alex Jones, was like going like, I don't know, you know, like they can't make up their minds. They just believed in giving out information and people make up their own minds. So it's extremely confusing, guys. But I hope what I teach will be very clear, all right? It'll be very clear and then it'll clean up the whole mess. But first of all, let's see what the scriptures state. Daniel chapter 7. The Bible does prophesy about Russia, and we find it right here. Bi mainly, mainly Bible-believing preachers would believe that the bear is Russia, as prophesied at Daniel chapter 7, verse 5. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Now, what does that mean, right? So then, I'm going to break it down to you. I'm not going to prove that uh, the bear is Russia. I've already given to you that in my other videos. Just type down bear, leopard, Gene Kim, and then you'll see me explain that in the video, okay? The bear is Russia. It's interesting, the, uh, Russia, that they are known as the bear who walks. And whenever they made conquests, they would, meant, they would use bear references. And the bear is an emblem and a symbol as well. For Russia. So it fits very well with Russian territory. If we take it for granted that the bear is Russia, what's the interpretation of this passage? So then there are three ribs. Now, the, it is interesting in the Bible, and if you look up the etymology, all right, now that's how we're going to find out. How we're going to find out is read the word exactly as it says, Amen. and don't correct any single word in the Bible. Amen. If you correct one word, you can erase prophecy here. 
Why? Because Revelation 22 says you take out one word or add one word of prophecy. You change prophecy. All right? So that's evidence you have to be King James only Amen. to understand King prophecy. All right? But that's just, uh, I, I won't park it there. I, I'll give a separate teaching on that, which is really interesting. Okay? But I'll do that later one day. The point is, we have to believe every word. So then rib, when you look it up, it refers to side. All right, if we understand that's referring to side, and that's the reason why uh, you have these ribs that's protecting uh, the heart or the inner organs. It's part of the side here, see that? So if we understand that rib means side, and it's also interesting if people want to play Greek and Hebrew, you look up that same Hebrew word, it'll show side in other verses actually. So then there are cases in our English translation, it'll show rib. Why? Because it's referring to a, a body feature or a biological feature. But then if it's referring to a thing, then they can't say rib, so then they'll put side. Okay? So then we see right here that even with Hebrew, and but more importantly, the English itself in your King James Bible, it means side. So then there are three sides that come up out of the mouth of the bear. And I've always wondered what that meant. Now, Dr. Ruckman, if you read his Daniel commentary, it is intensely interesting. In his Daniel commentary, he points out that the three that were within the bear, that one of them is actually Ukraine. And the other two are referring to the other parts that Russia used to gain territory. But one of them is Ukraine. The other two, I'm not going to examine that because that's not the important one. The important one we want to examine is Ukraine. So let's take it for granted that this is Ukraine then. If it's Ukraine, one of the rib is Ukraine, look at your passage. What does the Bible say? It says in the middle of verse 5, And it, the bear, had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they, ribs right? Follow the context, right? They is referring to the three ribs, right? That's the closest context. Said thus unto what? It. That's the mouth. And that's obvious because mouth is the closest context that's singular for it. But the next part of the sentence obviously refers to the mouth. Arise, devour much flesh. Okay. So think about it. So then Ukraine then if we follow that, is calling out to the mouth of the bear, the mouth of Russia, arise, devour much flesh. You know what devour much flesh means for some of you who didn't know? Go to Deuteronomy 32. That means destruction from war. That means destruction from war, guys. Look at Deuteronomy 32. And just study your book. That's it. Study your Bible. People don't study the Bible. The Bible will give you all the answers. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Look at verse 42. Verse 42. So what does devour flesh mean? That means like a slaying in battle, guys. See, it's war, destruction from war. You see that there? If you look at this whiteboard, I have three bullet, uh, bullet points. One of them is destruction from war, and that's pointing to this, see? That's referring to this. But then devour flesh, see that right there? Destruction from war. See that? That's what it's referring to. Look at verse 42. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall what? Devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the what? Enemy. Enemy. See, that's warfare. Destruction from war. Now go back to Daniel 7. Daniel 7. All right, but this still was a little bit hard for me. Why would God say sides coming out of the mouth of the bear or rib, right? Why? One is this. One, if it's referring to rib, then it's going to be a part of this bear. That's one. All right, so it has to do with the, being a part of the bear. Now, Ukraine, they're trying to, and then what you're hearing from mainstream media is that they're trying to retain its independence, right? 
Whereas Russia is insisting, no, it was a part of us, okay? So then you can go throughout history and then they'll argue back and forth about that. But the point is right here is that it's so interesting. This side is telling the mouth of the bear basically what? Devour much flesh. What does that mean? Let's destroy in war. How about that? Now, if you're looking at the, your current events, there's no doubt that that was already a history with Ukraine and Russia already. So then, if that is the case, and even right now, what, were, what was Ukraine saying? We're going to battle. We're going to war. We're going to fight it out, right? That's what you supposedly hear from the mainstream news, right? So then look at that. It's, it's daring. It's challenging. It's giving out, proclaiming war. If we take that as the case, I don't understand why three sides have to come out of the mouth. And then the other part that confused me is it raised up itself on one side at verse 5. But it makes sense if you think this way. I kept looking at the bear. All right? You got to realize the bear is a symbol of a kingdom. It's a symbol of a nation. So instead of thinking a bear with three sides coming out of the mouth, what if I were to picture that as the nation, the kingdom? Because that's what the Bible says, right? The Bible says that each of these animals is not a literal animal that comes out with three ribs. It's supposed to picture, symbolize what? The kingdom, yeah. the nation. Right. So then when I picture it that way, it made sense. Let's picture it now, all right? Now, the Bible says, let's read this, okay? If we were to picture it this way, and isn't that interpretation correct in the Bible? Yes, it's supposed to represent a nation, right? Yeah. The bear, the rib, and the mouth and stuff like that. Okay, if we take it and picture it that way, let's see how this makes sense now. Verse 5, And behold, another beast, a second, like to Russia. Right? We agree so far with that one, right? And Russia, look at this, raised up itself on one side. Why? Because it has a lot of other sides that would claim it belongs to Mother Russia, right? So raised itself on one side. All right, let me move this way now so that people can see. And it had what? Three ribs. All right, Ukraine and then the other countries, right? In the where? Mouth. You know what mouth means? Look up in a dictionary or even in the etymology. Mouth means entrance, opening, door. Now look at this mouth here of this bear, or the entrance and the door of it. Then look at that. That makes sense. Three ribs in the mouth of it. Boom, 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 other parts, right? But let's look at one of the sides. Rib, three ribs in the mouth, or three what? Sides in the entrance and opening of Russia. Yeah. Meaning, in the Bible, three ribs in the mouth of the bear. That makes sense now, don't it? That makes sense. Who says the Bible is boring, man? You know how you get into prophecy? You take every word, literally as it says, and also biblical hermeneutics, you can't ignore the figurative, the allegorical, the symbolic interpretation behind it as well. When you combine the two, you got an interesting book. All right, now look at that now, all right? Now let's keep following along here, okay? Then... Keep reading verse 5. And they, the what? The sides of Russia said, let's go to war. All right, didn't we look at the scriptural references and then the yeah. reasons behind it? That would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Wow, man, that book is interesting. But uh, let's look at some interesting ones, other interesting ones, shall we? Let's look at Proverbs. 28, 
Hosea 13. I want you to go to Hosea 13. Hosea 13. I almost spent all day for this teaching, actually. This was a lot of work, so. Because I want to understand what that verse meant. And then also, like, how does it relate to the current events? Because there is something there, but I had to study and study and study, and then the Bible just went, woo! Yeah. <laughs> All right? So let's look at Proverbs 28 and then Hosea 13. All right, audio is still good, right? I want to make sure that I'm not going out. All right. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 28 and Hosea 13. And one more is uh, oh, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 17. 2 Samuel 17. The scripture interprets scripture. Scripture with scripture. That's another rule of biblical hermeneutics, right? 2 Samuel chapter 17. And then I want you to go to Hosea 13. Now look at how Scripture interprets Scripture. And look at this. I wrote it out so it can be made simple for you guys, okay? So we see that this makes sense, but then what are these, right? So let's look at this. The point of these arrows is this, is that all these words here are pointing to the bear. Now, use this in your mind, okay? Why would God pick a bear? Yeah. He could choose a tiger, he could choose a cockroach, he could use, you know, a lion. Why did he use a bear? Then we have to look at God's mind when he uses that picture, that symbol. He uses a symbol of a bear for a reason. Yeah. So in his mind, let's think, let's see what he thinks about a bear. So far we know is this. Russia we see Ukraine and the other nations from it. That's what we saw so far. We see destruction from war. But is there a little bit more? Let's look. Hosea 13, verse 8. I will meet them as a bear that is what? Bereaved of her whelps. Okay, God's using the bear again. Robbed of whelps. So basically her babies, all right? Why? Let's keep reading. And will rend the call of their heart, and there will I what? Devour them like a lion, the beast shall tear them. He said devour. He's talking about what? The destruction of, his, the destruction of a group of people here. Wait a minute. Deja vu. Deuteronomy 32, right? Devouring a group of people is what? Destruction from war. So notice right here we see destruction from war again at verse 8, but it's connected to what? A bear that's robbed of her babies. Why? Because you're not thinking about this. When do you get a bear to attack? It's not like a leopard, guys. It's not like a lion. There's a big, huge reason. Sure, it could be starvation factors or scared factors, but there's a, real, the, there's a number one reason, the more popular reason. When the baby is stolen from her. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear what I said? I think you're connecting dots. So, so, when you're, so, when, when, so let me reinterpret that, okay? And when I reinterpret it, it's going to be through scripture. It's not my own, okay? When a bear is robbed of her baby, that's why that bear is going to go uh, devour flesh. All right, let me interpret these three things. When Russia is robbed of her children, or she claims to belong yeah. to her, yeah. then she, let's go to war. Whoa. Good teaching. Oh, connect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Are you seeing something in the Bible already <laughs> that's like <laughs> unleashing already through current events already? And you're going, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're, it's happening right now, you know? Amen. Isn't that Amen. Wow, that Bible is something, right? Amen. That Bible is something. Daniel chapter 7, I know people are going to argue that, you know, this is referring uh, to historically Persia, Greece, and Rome, right? 
Yeah, but Bible believers, when we interpret Revelation and Daniel, we don't stick to a historical interpretation. Yeah. We're not preterists. We don't think everything's fulfilled at the first centuries. Yeah. We believe it's prophetic in the future. Amen. So historically, yes, Persia, Greece, Russia, for the bear and the other animals, but prophetically, we believe it jumps to the future, and one of them, that's the best candidate, is Russia. Yeah. So then if we believe prophetically the bear is Russia, then all these references we're seeing so far is making sense with Daniel 7, why it's rising to one side and then arise, devour much flesh. Why? Why would the bear just go out and devour much flesh? You have to antagonize that bear. That's how you get the bear to attack. When one of its supposedly, what she thinks is, that's my children. Putin says, that's our people yeah. over there that we are going to protect and go over there. Well, Isn't that what you've been reading on the news? Yeah. Okay, let's look at, let's look at, I'm not done, brother. 2 Samuel 17, I got to show you. All right, 2 Samuel 17. 2 Samuel chapter 17. There is no doubt that the bear robbed of whelps is referring to, I'm angry and I want to go to war. That figurative expression in the Bible is referring to war. Look at 2 Samuel 17. Look how Hushai the Archite says at verse 8. Verse 8. For, said Hushai, thou knowest thy father and his men that they be mighty men. Soldiers, right? And they be chafed in their minds as a what? Bear robbed of her whelps in the field. And thy father is a what? Man of war. That's plain. That's referring to war, guys. This is all referring to war. When that, those ribs are coming out and say, come on, let's go. That means war. So one side is daring Russia to go. Whoa. Scripture. You won't read Scripture the same after that. <laughs> Okay, now go to Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs 28. Now I'm going to tell you about uh, all the information that you're hearing, and it's going both sides, either way, it's just a mess. When you look up the information, especially online, online is never trustworthy, obviously. But when you go up online, you're wondering if there are people who are going anti-Russia and being pro-war and like pro-America. And then there's the other side that's being pro-Russia and anti-war and America shouldn't be involved. And Russia may not really be a bad guy as we think we, uh, they are. So there's just so much misinformation going on. And then what I want to do is uh, go one by one. Okay, so then the first dispute is this. The first dispute, which is very interesting. This shows you cannot trust the mainstream news. That's going to be the bottom line from what I'm going to show you, all right? Or information online, basically, all right? You can't just trust it because I'm going to show you how this works, okay? First of all, you get mainstream news media talking about, look at these Ukraine people fighting for their country. And then there was like a Miss Beauty pageant person who was fighting and then other people who were fighting and then... Some were tweeting or showing like some videos of children having guns and etc. But actually, Axios had to admit this. Those videos, you'll find out they were actually old videos from years ago. So it's not really that Ukraine is having such brave people and they're putting this patriotism in your mind, like the Ukraine people are such great people and they're fighting for their country and stuff like that. It's not as patriotic or heroic as you think, guys. A lot of it is fake videos, and even Axios admits it. The title of their article is Ukraine Misinformation Spreads as Users Share Videos Out of Context. And one of them, it's so funny, one of them, when they found out that this uh, ghost of something, I forgot the label that one of the heroes was called, when they found out that it, was a, uh, it had some falsities within it, then one, some of the people got mad and said, I don't care if, if it's false. You can't steal away the hope of people like this. Why? I thought we're supposed to be, this is the liberal, idiotic, atheist-minded world that's like, you know, oh, why do you believe there's a God and stuff like that? You know, well, we have the hope in heaven. Why would you take that away from us? Because it's not science. It's not real. Hypocrite. Hypocrite. 
All right, that's what you guys are, man. Here's another one. Another one is, it's very interesting, but supposedly, supposedly, the areas where Russia uh, was doing their attacks around Ukraine, it coincided with some labs that were run by the U.S., supposedly. Oh, yeah. So then Putin and then some of the uh, Russian people, they would argue, or those who are on Putin's side more, they would argue that, so the reason why we're going there is because of America, that they're dabbling with a country that they shouldn't be dabbling with. And NATO and these guys shouldn't be dabbling with. And they're setting up labs. And if it happened in our border, wouldn't we be upset? Which, you know, I'm trying to be fair on both sides, okay? I'm not saying, go Putin, see child, okay? Don't say that. Don't think like that, you idiots, you, okay? But I'm trying to be fair on all arguments so we can understand what's going on, right? So then the argument is, wouldn't America rationally be upset too if China started to put stuff within Mexico, for example, that's on our border? Wouldn't we go like that? Yeah. yeah. So here's an article, and this is a professional article, Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. Title of the article is U.S. Official, Russian Invasion of Ukraine Risk, Release of Dangerous Pathogens by Matt Field. So then when I read this article, they actually don't totally deny it. They don't totally deny the idea that where the Russians were attacking, that there were labs involved. Now, some of the areas that they attacked may not have had the labs, but then the way that they argued, the other side argued was, well, these weren't bioweapons. Well, you know, I've seen the past two years what our U.S. government said, you know, about labs, yeah. right? And, you know, that don't really jive with me, okay? So what am I saying? I'm saying that what you're hearing may not be the full or clear story that you think on both sides, both sides. Here's a funny one is that here's an article title from MSNBC News. Putin using false Nazi narrative to justify Russia's attack on Ukraine, experts say. So from this uh, MSNBC ar article, a lot of you have heard where Putin said, I'm coming there for the denazification because of Nazis over there. So then one of them, a, trusted a trustworthy source who worked for Obama, uh, McFaul, all right, McFaul, such a very trustworthy guy. He worked for Obama before. He said, there aren't no Nazis in Ukraine. What is he talking about? One, I don't trust people like him. Two, they weren't paying attention. February 25th, 2022, guys, date of this article, from the New York Times. Title, far-right militias. That's what they refer to the Nazis as far-right or the alt-right, in case some of you didn't know. Far-right militias in Europe plan to confront Russian forces, a research group says. Wow, okay. <laughs> McFaul, who worked for Obama, you trust? What an intelligent guy that our whole government and the world is trusting upon his words. There are no Nazis. Here's another one from Reuters. And this was years ago. People knew this years ago, guys. This is not new news. This is from March 19, 2018 from Reuters. Title, Commentary, Ukraine's Neo-Nazi Problem. Ukraine's Neo-Nazi Problem by Josh Cohen. Hey, I'm not reading from InfoWars, yeah, right. all right? I do my research. Yeah. I'm playing your game, liberals. I'm playing your game, mainstream world, all right? I'm using those sources when I argue. Here's another one. This is not new news. This is old news. Everybody knew this kind of stuff. It's so ridiculous nowadays. This is an uh, interesting video where time also put a video out. This is from Time, okay? Time Magazine. The title of their YouTube video is Inside a White Supremacist Militia in Ukraine. In Time's Magazine's own YouTube channel. Oh, by the way, this date is a year ago. Wow, uh, Obama's, uh, the guy who used to work for Obama, very trustworthy guy, just like Biden, Pelosi, these people, very trustworthy guys. Harris, you know, 
<laughs> you know, like that. Trustworthy people, man. You trust them with your lives. You vote for these people. You say, save our lives. You will rescue us. My goodness. By the way, the New Zealand mosque bomber is from that militia group. Time magazine will show it. Oh, liberals don't mention that part, do they? See, th there's something they're hiding. They're not being honest. Now, you might say, why is it that way? Why is it that way that they're being dishonest? That's normal throughout war. False flags. Mm -hmm. That's been normal throughout war. You want the evidence? The evidence, I'll give you a lot of evidence. That's why you can't... Re if you really want to trust your government, and look, I want to trust when a person tells me something, okay? Yeah. It's not like whenever I talk to a person or a person who works for the government, especially when they're nice people or pretend to be nice people or they're just deceived nice people, that I just want them to lie to me. I want to take them at their word and be kind to them in return, right? So that's what I want to do. But the thing is, our government has a history that even Democrats and liberal professors have admit that our government is not really that a good government. It's not really that patriotic land of the free, home of the brave mentality that you think. It has a history of corruptions, especially false flag, where they instigated wars. So then what makes me concerned, I'm not saying it's fact, but it's making me concerned. When you have a history of false flags where you, tried, where you deliberately did this to instigate wars, like Iraq and what happened in Israel and other places, that, and Cuba, then how can I all of a sudden trust you guys when you're talking about this kind of information from the news? And they have a history, all right? This is evidence. Title from The Independent, okay? This is from The Independent. Bush plotted to lure Saddam into war with fake UN plane. Here's from the Pulitzer Prize winning uh, article writer, journalist, okay? From The New Yorker. Title of the article, Preparing the Battlefield, The Bush Administration Step Up Its Secret Moves Against Iran. And if you read that, they deliberately were doing stuff, I think, with the Navy, where they were trying to uh, instigate war so they can have excuse to go to the territories of Iran. Operation Northwoods, have you ever heard of that? Or Operation Susanna? Look that up. Intensely interesting. And Wikipedia will even admit it. Okay, Wikipedia will even admit it. This is just basic news. This is not fake information. It's basic news everyone agrees with. If you study that, our governments, and not just American government, but governments of this world, has a history of false flags. And in Operation Northwoods, U.S. military got involved with the operation where CIA operatives, they were, trying to, they were committing acts of terror terrorism against the American military and even civilians. Why? So they can instigate something with Cuba. And the title of the article from ABC News is U.S. military wanted to provoke war with Cuba. So you can look up that one too. Here's another one. This is from the, uh, again, the bulletin of the atomic scientists again about Operation Susanna with what's going on with Israel. And it was an ugly mess. They were trying to instigate and start something. The title of the article is The Levon Affair, How a False Flag Operation Led to War and the Israeli Bomb. You notice that they, they deliberately do these false flags. Government has a history, world governments, not just America, world governments have a history of finding an excuse to go to war. And in order to do that, they do false flags. And you make this an exception to your history? It's like the boy who cries wolf so many times, and then when he cries wolf so many times, then you can trust him at the next one? How can you trust him when they cry wolf? See, it becomes very concerning to people like me. And here's a funny one. This is from the Associated Press, their YouTube channel. But when one of the intelligent agents got up and said, you know, Russia is doing a false flag, it's so funny. The, a uh, the Associated Press showed this journalist saying, this is too, too incredible. Do you have evidence? Do you have evidence? And the guy doesn't give detailed evidence. He just says, our government has it, you know. Our government has it. We collaborate with British and uh, other governments, so we have it, you know. And he's like, the reporter kept bugging him, but, but you don't have specifics, you know, have evidence. And 
The title of the Associated Press video, and you can watch it, it's so interesting, that exchange. Reporter demands evidence of Russia false flag plot. All right, watch that video. It's worth it, trust me, okay? It's so interesting. And then the agent, how he tried to get around it at the end was saying, well, if you prefer to uh, listen to Russian intelligence rather than our intelligence, then that's fine. Like, it put the scare on him, right? Like he's pro-Russian or pro-socialist communist or something, right? Hmm. So, it's just a lot of interesting things. And it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder. With all this information going out, what's the point? The point is, the world is so much paying attention to that that they're not paying attention to other things. What happened to the pandemic situation? What happened to uh, the globalists and the elitists behind the scene? Well, people weren't paying attention. Didn't you know that at March is when they start the first step or one of the first steps where WHO is getting together where they can take control over a nation so their constitution won't save them. So in other words, some WHO is plotting something for peace and safety where not even our constitution can rescue us. The title of the article from Nature, Nature is World Commits to a Pandemic Response Pact. What's next? And supposedly it's one, the, the first step commences at March. But what's going on at March? Ukraine, Russia, so much misinformation. And then the devil behind the scenes, those globalists behind the scenes are setting up that new world order to control people where they don't pay attention. That's the plan. That's the plan, isn't it? That's how elitists always get away with their evil is that they always do things behind the scenes. And it weakens our nation. America has a history of independence and constitution. So they're a very tough, that's why they became a strong and powerful nation. So then, let's start the weakening process where they're paying attention to this while we can control them behind the scenes and weaken them. And a big evidence of that is if you go to Law Enforcement Today, their website, the <coughs> and this is not new news. You can find it in other news, mainstream news. Title of the article is Outrage Grows as Biden Diverts Border Patrol Agents from U.S. Border to Aid Ukraine Border. So now, did, remember we got that border crisis of too many people coming in? So then the border agents, they've got too much on their hands and they can't control it. So then you get a whole bunch of people flowing in freely into America and God knows who they are, right? Dangerous people, especially uh, the, when some have confessed that prostitution got higher, drug cases got higher, crime got higher because certain drug lords took advantage of that. So then the country is falling apart where so many people are flooding in, but at the same time, they're getting rid of their border agents, if that's not enough, and sending them to over here. You divert the attention here so that your own nation, America, can become weaker. The globalists, they know this. This America, we need to take control. When Trump came in and then the American people came in, it was, it was shaking, it was uh, causing a little ruckus. So then what? They had to put those boys in their place. You know where you belong. We need to teach you who's in charge. So says the globalist. So that's what's going on behind the scenes in case some of you guys didn't know about that. Hmm. Then Proverbs 17. Go to Proverbs 17. What does the Bible say about all this? I'll tell you what the Bible says. It's interesting. I'll show you what the Bible says about all this. And then I like to give you a quote from this person, which is very, very interesting. It has a lot of truth in it. The person's not a saved believer, but you'll know the name. He said, yes, so we're going to go there later. Yeah, but I want you to go to Proverbs 17 first, all right? So we're going to go to Proverbs 28 too. All right, now this is the interesting quote. One of the hopeful things that I've discovered is that nearly every war that has started in the past 50 years has been a result of media lies. Yeah. 
The media could have stopped it if they had searched deep enough. If they hadn't reprinted government propaganda, they could have stopped it. You know who quoted that? Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks. Interesting. What does the Bible say about that? It, it shares you the same truth. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 12. Let a what? Bear, Bear robbed of her whelps meet a man. Isn't that interesting? So why did God call Russia a bear? So then in Proverbs 17, don't you think that he has in mind at verse 12, he's sharing that same thought of the bear at Proverbs 17, 12 with Daniel chapter 7 about a bear robbed of her whelps? Yeah, that same idea is in there, okay? So let's say Rus Russia, okay? So going to war with Russia, verse 12, right, is what? Better than a fool in his folly. No one's an exception, guys, all right? Not Putin, not Biden, nobody. I don't trust the world governments. And that's the simple mentality in this complex information. Within this complex information, when they tell you what's going on with, really what's going on with Russia, Ukraine, or their political agendas behind it, my good advice to tell you is this, is that uh, you cannot trust the word of man, all right? You can only trust the word of God. You only go yeah. by the word of God and the rest of that mess, that's the, the devil's kingdom yeah. fighting it out with each other. Amen. All right? Amen, Pastor. Your goal is to care about these lost souls, yeah. to focus on your own lives, physical lives, and try to get souls saved. Amen, Pastor. Okay? Amen. That's the best balance for that. All that out there is just confusing misinformation. I already give you, given you too many evidences for that. I've given you a scriptural reference for you to think about as well. But here's the bigger evidence of this. The bigger evidence why both sides I do not trust is you see globalists on both sides. Globalists on both sides who are supporting the endeavors. So you got globalists supporting the American side or NATO side, and then you got globalists supporting Russian side. So it doesn't make a difference. Here's one from the Daily Wire. Elon Musk, title of the article, how Elon Musk could save the internet in Ukraine and the International Space Station from Russia. How about that? Here's another one. George Soros, a very infamous globalist name. George Soros, he was supporting and he was egging on uh, America or the nations to go to war against Russia. Uh, you can see so many tweets. Just go to George Soros' tweets and it will show it. He says, U.S. must do, quote, whatever possible to back Ukraine. He mentions here, it is important that both the transatlantic alliance, United States, Canada, European Union, and the United Kingdom, why that's the Antichrist uh, United Nations, that's Psalms 2, right? But also other nations do whatever is in their power to support Ukraine in its time of existential threat. Here's another one. Putin's actions are a direct attack on the sovereignty of all states that were once in the Soviet Union and beyond. Russia is in clear violation of the United Nations Charter and should be held accountable. Wow, violation of the Antichrist Kingdom, right? United Nations and should be held accountable. See that? So we see right here that George Soros is also involved. But this is even more disturbing. And uh, Fox News, in uh, their video clip, where it reads in the bottom, Ukrainian parliament member ready to fight and etc. But you can look at a video. Shivam YouTube channel actually caught the segment. Ukrainian MP Kira Rudik said what? We not only fight for Ukraine, we fight for this new world order. Yeah, don, 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 right? How about that? It's nothing's new, guys. Nothing's new. But this doesn't uh, get away with Putin. Some people think that Putin's a good guy. I would be very careful in saying that, okay? I would be very, very cap uh, careful saying that. Because it's interesting, even the most famous conspiracy theorist, Alex Jones, in his InfoWars article, he mentions right here, title of the article, 
order out of chaos how the Ukraine conflict is designed to benefit globalists. And they point out it, uh, you can't just justify Putin. Why? Because Putin was involved with globalists as well, guys. Didn't you know that? Putin is also involved with globalists. Here's the title of the article. From the Wall Street Journal, Henry Kissinger on the assembly of a new world order. Okay, why is Henry Kissinger important for the new world order? Because Putin likes this guy. From U.S. News, title of the article, Kremlin hails Kissinger for Putin comments. So I wouldn't back up Putin so quickly if I were you. Here's another one. You remember the Great Reset? Klaus Schwab with the World Economic Forum? Guess who's joining them? Title of the article from the World Economic Forum site. Russia joins center for the fourth industrial revolution. How about that? And it says right here, Russia will take a leading. Russia will take a leading role in shaping the trajectory of the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah, I wouldn't root for Putin so quickly. Here's another one. The title of the article from the Washington Post. This is a liberal, okay? Liberals don't even, don't, are not even ashamed to say this too. Title of the article from the opinion, Putin's assault on Ukraine will shape a new world order. The point is both sides, they're wanting to do the new world order yeah. their own way. Yeah. Point is, it's a world order. And who's God against? Not specifically America or specifically Russia. He's against all nations. Yeah. If you read the Bible, he says, gather up all nations. Yeah. Cool. All nations. Wow. Man, that's enlightening. And yeah. I don't have much time, but I got two more big gold mines, okay? All right, then. So let's go to Proverbs 28. Bear is Russia, right? Did we agree? Yeah. All right, God wouldn't call Russia a bear unless he has in mind what a bear is. So what would he think about the bear? Verse 15, as a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a good ruler, a guy who's against the elites. No, so is a what? Wicked, Wicked ruler over the what? The poor, poor people. people. Now, think about this, okay? If God believes that a bear is that kind of reference, where it's negative, where it has a wicked ruler, and God puts the bare kingdom of a ruler for Russia at Daniel 7, I would think twice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a good guy. No, I'd be careful if I were you, okay? I'd be careful if I were you. Look at Rev Revelation 13. This is even another evidence. Revelation 13. And I got to wrap this up quickly. I got a lot of other gold mines here. I spend all day on this teaching. It's a lot of stuff, all right? A lot of stuff, guys, all right? All right, the Antichrist beast, we can agree, is verse 2, right? Is that the globalist Antichrist kingdom. Can we agree with that? Yeah. Revelation 13, 2? All right, who's in the Antichrist globalist kingdom at verse 2? And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a what? Bear. Bear. Russia is... Its feet is going to be a part of that in the Antichrist kingdom. All right. Now, if you study my Revelation verse by verse studies, it's it'll be very it'll be very interesting. It'll show where communist Muslim nations, and that can include Russia, that there are times that they'll side in with the Antichrist, but at times they'll go rogue. So it's an interesting thing to look into. All right, but I'm not going to expound on that. All right, and that's. That's history anyway, guys. That's current event in histories. There were times Russia has been on the United States side or UN side, and there were times they did their rogue thing. Yeah. All right? So that's just common sense throughout history. Now, what is also in this Antichrist kingdom? Revelation 17. Don't forget the great whore of Revelation. Don't forget that whore now. Revelation 17. She's wicked. She ain't holy. Don't call it Holy Father. All right. Look at Revelation 17. Notice right here at Revelation 17 and verse uh, 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. 
And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. All right, so the Roman, this woman is connected to the Antichrist uh, kingdom system, right? Notice verse 5, the, upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. All right, that's the Roman Catholic Church and, or the Roman Empire, okay, if you look at this drawing. And I'm not going to expound on that or prove it. You can find them in my Revelation verse-by-verse -verse studies or just type down Babylon Gene Kim and then you'll find that one, all right? So the point is, taking it for granted, the Roman Empire, the Roman Church is Revelation 17, 18. It is undoubtedly going to be connected to the Antichrist kingdom. Why? Because Revelation 17, 18 shows it. Another evidence is Daniel 2. Go to Daniel 2. Now, this is the big thing here. All right. Iron mixed with clay. In one of my videos, I have to keep saying this, guys. That way people don't get lost and accuse me of contradicting, okay? So... And I did a video about iron mixing with clay, and I was looking at a prophetic application, not historical. So guys, I know iron is Rome and clay is referring to the other ten kingdoms. Look, I know that I taught them my discipleship classes. You just didn't watch them, okay? You just watch one thing and then point out an accusation, all right? But if prophecy works this way, especially the book of Revelation, you cannot have one application. You can go... A single, double, triple, all right, applications. And believe me, when you do Revelation 2 and 3, you need to do triple, okay, and the rest of the whole book, okay? There is what we call in biblical, biblical hermeneutics, a historical application and a prophetic application. Prophetic application, I point out the iron mixed with clay, we see what? The fallen angels, the sons of God. But I pointed out in a, another interesting video with the rise of 5G beast that electronics, devils have to do with electronics, electricity. So I know the prophetic application with this one could be, and I'll say could be, referring to the technology mingling with the humans, all right, through the fallen angels. But I'm going to concentrate the historical. The historical application, which we can agree, is Rome, right, the iron. Yeah. But the feet, which is the Antichrist kingdom, all right, which uh, eschatology scholars know it is. This is referring, and not all of them, but uh, I'm not going to expand on that, okay? The Antichrist kingdom is not just clay, it's what? Iron mixed with clay. So if the Roman Empire is iron, and that's what the Bible says, okay? This is iron. If Roman Empire is iron, this Roman is mixing with the Antichrist kingdom. That, what does that mean then? That means this Roman church of Revelation 17, 18 is combined with the Antichrist kingdom. All right. Now, here's the question, though. Why are there two legs? Go to Daniel 2. Daniel 2. That's the interesting part. I'll tell you the clue. The historical interpretation is this. The Roman Empire is split in two. And if you know your history, it's split into the Western Catholic Church, but the Eastern what? Greek Orthodox. All right? Because go to Daniel 2. Daniel chapter 2. The Bible says at verse 40, And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. See that? But notice that the iron is referring to the legs of verse 33. His what? Legs of iron. See, plural, not one. Why? Because the Roman Empire split in two. That's fulfilled in history. So that's a historical application of Daniel 2. So then we can see the Western Catholic Empire, the Eastern Greek Orthodox. Why is that important? That shows what Russia has to do with end times. Because for some of you who didn't know, there's a website that I strongly recommend it. It was very, very good. It gives empirical scientific evidence too. It's Unheard, U-N-H-E-R-D. But Unheard posted an article titled Putin's Spiritual Destiny. And you know what that article was about? The destiny of one of the cities, Kyiv in Ukraine, its destiny is to be part of the Orthodox Church. 
Why? Because I don't know if you knew this, what's rampant in Russia and uh, the eastern side is the Orthodox Church. Then look at that, Roman, Cat Roman Catholicism, I... I use that interchangeably with Orthodox, and I know technically they're different, but the point is, if I'm going to go for techni technicality's sake, they're the Roman Empire, the Roman Church. That's the bottom line. It's a Roman Church, and that includes this guy too. So he's going to play a part somehow with this one. Isn't that interesting? Here's another article for some of you who didn't know. This is intensely like, whoa, and uh, it's a video recording. And this is from Mother and Refuge of the End Time. So I think it's a Catholic channel. But they posted an interesting video. Malachi Martin, 1996. Fatima's Fulfillment. Russia, Kiev, and the Pope are part of the final solution. That's the title of the video. You know what the prophecy was from Malachi Martin? He, was a, he, used to, he claimed to be inside at the Vatican and saw the Jesuit secret. And this is what he claimed about one of the Fatima prophecies that he found with the Jesuit secrets. You know what it was? This is supposed to be the prophecy. Salvation for the world, the cure for the world ills, will start in the Ukraine and in Russia. And that was why the Virgin in the Fatima vision of 1917 was supposed to have spoken actively about Russia and that Russia, first of all, has to be cured of her errors and then she will help the entire world to get better and to cure itself of its sins. Could we be seeing that right now? Because let me tell you one thing, the devil can prophesy too. Not just the Lord. Didn't you read the book of Deuteronomy? If a false prophet who goes after devils gives you a prophecy and it comes to pass, see, don't follow. See, their prophecies can come true too. All right, lots of interesting stuff. And then go to Colossians 1. Colossians 3, excuse me, Colossians 3. The Bible also shows you this Grecian connection, Greek Orthodox connection with Russia, okay? Look at this, Colossians 3. Here's another one, Colossians 3. Verse 11, verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, right, Greek, right? Circumcision nor uncircumcision. All right, so Greek versus Jew. Circumcision versus uncircumcision. Barbarian versus what? Scythian. You know who the Scythians were? They were the ancient people before Russia officially came to be. Those were ancient Russians, basically. Scythians during Paul's time. But why would Paul mention Scythian, not any other nationality here? Yeah. Unless they're as common as the what? Greek. And you know what was extremely common during that empire, during Paul's time? Greek. Oh, yeah. But Paul put, not Roman, he put Scythian. They must have had a relationship. Uh, so it's very interesting that some people, even some people, uh, I could be wrong about this, but from, it looks like even some people who are Russian native speakers, if they were to uh, look into the Greek New Testament, for example, that they would find some similarities. Very interesting. Amen. All righty then. Now, here's the biggest one I want to close. All right, Daniel 7, Daniel 7. Now, I'm smiling because of a big uh, nugget here, okay? But this is actually very scary, all right? So I'm not smiling because I'm insidious, all right? Because this is a very scary possibility. Go to Daniel 7. Now, the big thing people are thinking about is, what if we go nuclear war with Russia? And that was like the first thing in my mind, all right? Because of that history with Russia, right, that America had. So you can trust Biden. Title of the Hill article... Biden, public shouldn't worry about nuclear war with Russia. Oh, well, that's assuring, isn't it? You should have saw him at the interview when he, when he announced uh, officially about Ukraine going to war with Russia. You should have saw the reporters asking him questions. It's, I was so stinking angry. I want to just throw my cell phone across the room or something. What a pansy guy. What a, dude, this guy don't even know. He's a child. He's sick right now, guys, all right? Ah, uh, all right? 
And I mean that metaphorically, all right? Don't accuse me of fake news and dock me a point, YouTube, okay? All right? But is that really reassuring? How many, do you recall two years ago before the pandemic came out and remember that people were talking about like store, storing up food because this could be it? And then the government telling you, no, don't worry about it. Do you remember that? I sure remember it, because when I received that news the same day, the very same day, they changed their minds and said, we're going to lock down in California. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can really trust them. Yeah. So how do you not know they're doing that again? Wow. That if they're saying, no, there's no nuclear, but then behind the scenes, they're preparing. You know why? Here's something scary. Go to the website ready.gov. That's the official United States government website. Title uh, is Nuclear Explosion. So ready.gov is to inform its citizens how to you know, prepare for dis uh, catastrophes that happen. So specifically for nuclear explosion, you know when this article was updated? February 25th, 2022. They up why would they update that article? Yeah. <laughs> it makes you... Oh, Coinky dinky, isn't it? It's just a coincidence. Especially when Politico, mainstream news article, actually have the title, Yes, He Would, Fiona Hill on Putin and Nukes. And Fiona Hill is one of the deepest, one of the deepest researchers on Putin's life. And I'm quoting from mainstream news, guys. So basically, yeah, he would be capable of Help us, Lord. Isn't it interesting that one of uh, his weaponry, title from the Chronicle, and the Chronicle works with other mainstream news journals, so they, they are adamant about, we, we don't want to be fake news. So I'm even quoting a mainstream source. Title of it is RS-28 Sarmat. Is NATO US afraid of Putin's, what's one of this technology? Satan's two. So one of the technology that they're scared of, and then when nuclear explosion goes off, this name comes out, Satan 2. That's what he named it, guys. <laughs> Satan 2. Isn't that interesting? What does the Bible say? Daniel 7. Look at this, guys. All right. Look at this. And then we're going to compare it with Revelation 13. All right. Let me show you something very interesting. This is my big one, okay? Then I'm going to close it off. Revelation 13, Daniel 7, verse 7. Look at the wording here. Daniel 7, 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. We know that's the Antichrist, all right? Mainly people know that, all right? I'm not going to expound it here. Dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and had great iron teeth. See, it matched up with the iron. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And pay attention, it was what? Diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had what? Ten horns. Matching the ten toes of the Antichrist kingdom at Daniel 2. Ten. So that's why we know that's the Antichrist kingdom. But it said diverse from all the beasts. What beasts? Verse 4, 5, and 6. Lion, beast, leopard. All right? Now look at Revelation 13. This, there's no doubt this beast of Revelation 13 is matching with the beast of Daniel 7. Okay? Like Revelation 13, verse 2. And this is no-brainer. We know this is the Antichrist. All right? No-brainer. Revelation 13, 2. And the beast, which I saw, was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. See that? That matched with Daniel 7. So it was a terrible beast that was diverse from all beasts. See, it carried on the diversity of those three in Daniel 7. That's what it's pointing out. Okay, look at the interesting wording here. Okay, if, can we agree Daniel 7, 7 and Revelation 13, 2, that's the same Antichrist beast? Yes? Yes. Now look at this. Revelation 13, 2, the feet of a what? Bear, feet of a bear. Yep. Russia, right? Yep. 
Look at Daniel 7.7. 7. Here's the big one now. Look at this. Look at the middle of the verse. Devoured and break in pieces and what? Stamped the residue with the feet of it. The feet of a bear. Can we agree so far? Feet of Russia. Stamps it, leaving the residue. What do King James Bible believers do? Just look at the English word. Cambridge English Dictionary. What does residue mean? The part that is left after the main part has gone or been taken away or a substance that remains after a chemical process such as evaporation. Cambridge English Dictionary. Could it be then that this Antichrist will give nuclear war then? And that's what the residue is meaning. Yeah. Wow. Now, look, I know that this is referring to the Antichrist kingdom, so I'm not saying it's right now, okay? But that, because this is in the future, right? But it gives three possibilities I want to conclude, all right? So then what does that mean then with Russia and Ukraine? What will that have to do with Daniel 7-7 if this is going to turn out to be a genuine nuke thing? One, it could be this. One, it could be, uh, what was it? Uh, I had three interpretations. One, it could be that when uh, Russia starts to uh, stamp it out and then give that nuclear warfare, that we've been through nu uh, nuclear stuff before throughout history, right? So because we've been through that throughout history, Daniel 7.7 7 is not talking about now what's going on. It's going to talk about some other time in the future. That's possibility one, all right? Possibility two is that it's not going to happen. All right, so then it turns out that Russia will not send that nuclear warfare, all right? And then we all can breathe a sigh of relief or something. Or point three, which is even better, but not really well for the Lord, I mean, not for the Lord, for the world, okay, for the world, is that if this is really that nuke that Daniel 7 prophesied, okay, and I say if, okay, so I'm not sure if it's the case or not, but if it is, and that's what Daniel's trying to point out to you. That means if that happens during the Antichrist kingdom, we cannot be here. So you know what that is, guys? You better buckle up your seatbelts. That could mean that before Russia sends out that new, God could start that rapture. So in other words, the rapture could be even now. Could be tomorrow. Wow. What a... Now, that's a good finish, right? I told you it would be the bomb. Yeah. And I don't mean this bomb, all right? Don't get scared, all right? Please don't get scared, all right? Let's close with a word of prayer. Father God, I pray tonight's teachings have been an incredible blessing to the people that I leave behind for them and that they'll maybe able to have joy in your word and be able to understand the times we're living in, how it's unfolding scripture and how we should be preoccupied, not on current events because too much misinformation but that we got to be concentrating on your book, Lord. It's true, it has no misinformation. It has all the information we need and that we'll go about our Father's business, getting involved in a Bible-believing church, not just a church, a Bible-believing church. And I hope onlineers will understand that, Father, and that they can go to our website and then find a Bible-believing church near them. Get involved in soul winning and spiritually growing because tonight might be that night and it will be too late and we can never serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good night.